that I was only one minute late considering I sat down at 6.59 and didn't have the screen set up. So I just want to say that really quick. Um, let's go ahead and set up TikTok. Normally I do them first, but y'all are the priority and we were late. Do, 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 do. Um, and for those of you that didn't know, it's Tuesday. We're here because tomorrow's Valentine's Day. So just wanted to give y'all freedom and mainly me freedom. Oh my God. What is happening on my iPad right now? We're on a load. <clears throat> Hi, besties. We're here to talk about Dr. Phil. I need to drink my water. You missed last week. How dare you? What did we even do last week? Oh, we shamed the rich. Yes, next week is Tuesday too because I have to do parent-teacher conferences. Yay. I cannot wait. <clears throat> I'm going to conference the shit out of those parents. Can my freaking iPad load? Like, get it together. You have one job and it's to be an iPad. And normally you do it pretty well, but apparently not today. Oh, are these headphones plugged in? No. Good. Okay. We're going to give... <gasps> oh my god, I just like dropped my iPad everywhere. This is a really not a good first two minutes. Sorry about that. Anyway, we're here to talk about Dr. Phil. I hope that you all are excited to talk about Dr. Phil. This ended up being a lot more serious than I anticipated when I was making the slides. I kind of just picked him because of his face and general demeanor and aura. Like, I really didn't know anything about him, but his aura has never sat well with me. And so sometimes I pick people because I don't like their aura, and usually I'm right about that, and I find out a bunch of stuff about them. And that's one of my favorite things about doing this stream is proving myself right, because it happens a lot. And research is definitely still valid when you have confirmation bias, <laughs> is one thing I will say. <coughs> Sorry, I keep coughing. If I am sick, I'm going to be pissed. Anyway, let's read some of the people we have so far. I forgot classes tonight instead of tomorrow. I know I hate when I have to reschedule. Also, this is not going to be like the official decider, but let me let me see what y'all think. I'm kind of debating switching it to Tuesday forever because originally I just kind of picked Wednesday at random, but now at my school, every time we have an after school thing, it's on a Wednesday. Like that's one thing my school does just for like consistency reasons. So I'm like, maybe this is like not the wisest choice, but also it's not the end of the world because usually, um, <clears throat> usually we don't do that. Like it's a pretty rare occurrence. So I'm going to do a poll. My headphones are everywhere. I like don't have this set up to be typing right now, so I'm sure my double chin looks amazing. Um, but I have it set up to be like talking, not looking at my keyboard. So, okay, there we go. I like Tuesdays better. Also, I had a snow day today, so I'm all sorts of discombobulated. Oh, see, my school rarely does things on Wednesday because church. That's what I always thought, but we're always doing stuff on Wednesday. Um, I'm gonna be here no matter what, but the Wednesday people aren't here. I know. So that's why I like, I'm gonna do polls the next couple weeks and then just kind of like see where we're at. So like, I'll do another poll next week and then I'll do a Wednesday and do that. Um, my school decides to do stuff on Monday. That's like kind of a lot, but anyway, <coughs> we need to focus because we have a lot to talk about and Dr. Phil has done a lot of things and a lot of them have been really bad. So let's go ahead and discuss. For those of you on TikTok, you have to come to Twitch to see the pictures in the video and I highly recommend coming to Twitch to see the pictures in the video because it's a much, 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 much better time. Let me make sure my microphone is correct and it's not. Okay, there's the better microphone. Do you guys like that microphone better? Most people like that microphone better. Hopefully you can hear me. Let me know if it just like became terrible. Cash me outside. We will be having a very long discussion about the cash me outside girl. Long, 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 long discussion about that young woman. <clears throat> it's quieter but smoother. That's what I've heard. But it's like not as echoey. Okay. So the doctor who is kind of a doctor, a lot of people say he's not a doctor, but he unfortunately is a doctor. Um, his name is Philip Calvin McGraw. He was born September 1st, 1950. So he is quite literally the definition of a boomer, like could not have a more boomer year to be born, truly. 
It's not Wednesday. I know, right? It feels like a Wednesday. I used to watch Dr. Phil during gym class in high school. Like, they were showing you that, or you were doing that by choice. So anyway, he is an American television personality and author. He is best known for hosting the talk show Dr. Phil. He holds a doctorate in clinical psychology. That is in the game. That is in the game. He holds a doctorate in clinical psychology, but he stopped renewing his license in 2006, which we will discuss. And he rose to fame with the appearance on the Oprah Winfrey show. Um, I hate when Oprah makes mistakes. I hate it so much because like I'm just I really appreciate Oprah a lot. So like when she does make a mistake, I take that really hard. And like Oprah can make mistakes like we all make mistakes. It's literally totally fine. But like I just it like it's painful it's like when you realize your parents are human and you're like oh my god that's how I feel when Oprah makes a mistake like it's literally fine I'm not mad at her it's just painful for me <clears throat> so she also gave us Dr. Oz I know we talked about it in the Oprah stream it's very traumatic for all of us so where was I he was launched by Oprah Winfrey and that's what gave him his own show so we're gonna get into all of his lore so he was born in v- Venita Oklahoma As of the 2020 census, only 5,000 people live there. I've seen high schools with more than 5,000 people in them. Um, And he was born Philip Calvin McGraw. Like we said, his parents are Joseph McGraw and Anne Geraldine Jerry. Nice. Nice. He has two older sisters, Dina and Donna. Normally, I find that younger brothers are like, less problematic than the general male population because they like learn things from their sisters I don't believe that to be true of Dr. Phil maybe that's because his sister's names are Dina and Donna I am not going to speak on them because I don't know them but being named Dina and Donna is like not ideal he's a male Virgo interesting very very interesting so He grew up in the oil fields of North Texas and Oklahoma. His father was an equipment supplier. If that tells you anything, like, that's like one of the, that's such a dad job. Dad jobs are jobs that, like, you don't understand them at all. And it makes literally no sense. But you just know that they go to work and do that. I feel like I look naked because of my tank top and the mic is covering it and my hair is covering it. I'm just going to... Don't mind me. Just going to get a little modest up in here. Modest is hottest, and this is very much tangled, but that's fine, I guess. Um, There's twins somewhere in my family named Fred and Ted. I'm writing that down. I'm going to be honest with you. I am writing that down, unfortunately. That's very funny. That's like a sitcom (laughs) drama. Male Virgo explains a lot. Married to a male Virgo. We're praying for you daily. Did you just say Dina and Donna? Unfortunately, I did. So at 13, he started working at A&W Root Beer Stand and a local chain called Pizza Planet in Oklahoma City. Um, I feel like Dr. Phil, why do I keep wanting to call him Donald Trump? I have almost said that so many times so far. So I feel like Dr. Phil is the type of person that's like, I did child labor and that's why they should do it too. Like he is in favor of like removing the laws that prevent child labor. And he like, he feels that his experience is like proof that it was a good thing that he was working at age 13. You know, Pizza Planet is a pizza restaurant in Toy Story. It is. I think it's also a real place. Nothing about this introduction sounds like it's supposed to be real. Like, this is really a, like a like a witness protection fake-ass story. Like, this is a witness protection as hell. This sounds like AI wrote it. Sounds a lot like my dad. That's what I mean. Like, this is such dad lore where it's like I was working at a root beer stand when I was 13. I grew up in the oil fields of North Texas. Like, who are you? You've lived so many lives. He grew up to become a 6'4 linebacker. I guess like the pizza parlor or the pizza planet was like really feeding him. Like (laughs) he grew very quickly. And so he moved to Kansas with his father um, as his father pursued the lifelong goal of becoming a psychologist. I don't really understand why his dad had to move to Kansas to make that happen. Like do they not let people be psychologists in Oklahoma? Actually, that really checks out. Wow. Maybe they don't. 
don't talk about your feelings in Oklahoma. Um, so he moved to Kansas where he attended Shawnee Mission North High School in Kansas and he played as a linebacker on the football team. And in 1968, he earned a football scholarship to the University of Tulsa where he played a middle linebacker under coach Glenn Dobbs. I don't know literally what any of this means at all. Um, and then he later transferred to Midwestern State University in Wichita Falls, Texas. Midwestern State University sounds like Midwestern State University sounds like some high school kids in France had to make a play about America for their theater class. And that is the name of the high school that their play is set in. I know that's a very specific thing, but I think Midwestern State University is exactly what some French 10th graders would pick as their name. Don't have feelings in Oklahoma. Don't be gay in Indiana. <laughs> Sounds like a fake school and a fanfic written by a Brit. Sounds like I'm watching the Middle East by Wildcats. So <clears throat> this is his childhood friend talking about the good old days. I don't think this man actually knew him. I'm going to be honest with you. Let me switch the mic. I'll switch the mic so you can hear him. This is really anticlimactic, though. I don't really know why I included it. Yesterday, we knocked on the door where he used to live in the village. The person was very surprised. Had no <laughs> idea. Know it, she yeah. was now thrilled. <laughs> oh, well, today we caught up with one of his childhood friends. We both uh, grew up in this neighborhood. Joe Castillo recalls his friendship with Phil McGraw back in junior high. It was kind of like Mutt and Jeff. I was like 5'6", and he was like 6'2". Being the same age and living just across the street from each other in the village, Castillo says the two became instant friends. Our families knew each other real well. I was over there. He was over here. His mom would always have the best iced tea. <laughs> She'd have like... Four or five different bottles of it. Castillo recalls. They'll put anyone on the news. McGraw at the nearby YMCA. He says seeing Dr. Phil on TV now just reminds him of the friend he once knew. He always paid real close attention to people. Uh, always uh, was real caring about that. And uh, I, it, it, it doesn't surprise me. He's, he does what he does today. Well, during his time in Oklahoma, Dr. Phil also played... Local news can be so camp sometimes. And coming up tomorrow at 4, we are... Yeah, so there's his childhood friend. That's a picture of Dr. Phil as a child, apparently. And someone said, did they just abandon the mom and the sisters? I don't think so. I think, like, that was just written from Dr. Phil's perspective. But I am not 100% sure. I didn't really look into his family too much. So here's some pics of him in high school. A lot of people on the internet were saying that he was really hot in high school. I don't think that he looks attractive at all in high school and college because this is high school and college. I really, like people online were like, look at Dr. Phil in college. What a football hunk. His hairline is already receding. I think it says something really specific about a man to be having a receding hairline at age 20. You know, like, and I, like, I am an ally of the bald community. Like, my boyfriend is bald. My boss is bald. Like, I am with the bald community. But be bald. Like, we hate a receding hairline. Just be bald. Lots of people are bald by choice. Many of the people I just named. So be bald. Just literally be bald. Who cares? Um, Dr. Phil never stood <laughs> a chance. Like, I'm really just in the mood to be mean to someone tonight. <laughs> there he is. Phil McGraw, senior tackle, balding. There is him again. He literally... I cannot think of a more unremarkable looking person. <laughs> the Duggar hairline stop. And I don't know why this news channel is like literally obsessed with him. Like these are just a few of the clips that I found on this news channel about Dr. Phil. Uh. Hey, before Dr. Phil became a famous TV personality and psychologist, he spent some time on the football field right here in Oklahoma. Yes, he did. In fact, one of his There's games no news in Oklahoma, I guess. Football history. Take a look. Phil McGraw was born in Venita, Oklahoma. And I'm proud to be from Oklahoma. I'm proud to have grown up here. And before he became Dr. Phil on television, he was a linebacker for the Tulsa Golden Hurricane. 
Golden Hurricane? What? On the field. Standing I also thought it was four, Sir Tackle. McGraw was awarded a football scholarship to the University of Tulsa in 1968 and played middle linebacker under coach Glenn Dobbs. He told us he remembers running the stands at Skelly Stadium at 5 in the morning in full gear. And I've been in every seat. I've been on every row of that stadium a hundred times, let me tell you for sure. McGraw's team made history that same year when they <laughs> lost to the really University of Houston 100-6, to one of the most lopsided games in college football history. But for McGraw, it's only good memories. He you see those his eyes? Father, who Shifty. also played at TU. In fact, McGraw says one of his last trips with his father before he died was to Tulsa. His dad died, dad by the way. And my two boys, and we came for a homecoming game up here. 100 to 6 is crazy. Stuff. Same stadium it's Oklahoma. Had, this is the best they know, can do for news on September 10th of 2014. So it was good. He is quite the guy. You can catch they did Dr. this Phil's instead of like a 9-11 thing. I'm surprised. Anyway, moving on. Let me switch the microphone back to the good one. <laughs> okay. So I keep like we already talked about this. Sorry. Stupid, stupid. So anyway, let's talk about his personal life. I really don't care about his education or him very much, but I do want to talk about him being a bad husband. So he married his first wife. Yeah. First wife. First wife. He married his first wife. Bet y'all didn't know there was someone before that lady, Robin. I'm still stuck on Golden Hurricane. So he married his first wife, Debbie Higgins, in 1970 when she was 20 years old. She was very popular in high school. She was cute, blonde, cheerleader, homecoming queen, million-dollar smile. Y'all know the vibe. So she – I can't read this. This sounds like – fan fiction about Dr. Phil. Where the fuck did I find this? So they started dating when they were juniors and they felt like they were made for each other. Oh my God. So they got married high school sweethearts, whatever. So the complica complications were present in the beginning says Debbie wasn't allowed to date until she turned 16 and her brothers were watching her look like a hawk. She came home from her first date with Dr. Phil. I guess just then he was Phil. She came home from her date with Phil five minutes late um and so she was grounded for a month but they talked on the phone every day and they got married in 1970 in kansas and they tied the knot at roland park southridge presbyterian church which was her childhood church but once they got married apparently things started to change she has made some accusations against philip um claiming that he was very dominant and very controlling Phil wanted her to stay at home and take care of the household. That was her domain. He also asked her to start lifting weights to bulk up her chest. This reads like Tumblr fan fiction. So, yeah, he literally looked at his wife and was like, maybe lift some weights so your yitties get bigger. I would like it way better if you did that. I don't know if that was exactly his words, but I'm sure that's how it came across. Um... So do, 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 do. she also accused him of being unfaithful to her. He, she said, when I confronted him about his infidelities, he didn't deny these girls and told me that it had nothing to do with his feelings towards me and to grow up. And that's the way it was in the world. That tracks so hard. That tracks so hard that he would say that. Like, I can see it. I can see the words coming out of his mouth, just like gaslighting the shit out of her. Being like, why would what I do have anything to do with you? I think it's really weird that you asked me about that. And it's just the way it is. So it's kind of even embarrassing for you to bring it up. I'm willing to forgive you for bringing it up as long as you apologize and promise to never do it again. Isn't that crazy? Isn't that literally fucking insane what I just said to you? Wow. <laughs> I know a thing or two because I've seen a thing or two. Anywho, um, where was I? Debbie said that about the cheating in 2002. And according to her, he was very domineering and would not allow her to participate in family business. So I'm guessing he didn't like talk about money with her is what she means by that. And claimed that she was confined to domestic duties and she felt trapped in her marriage and said he had a roving eye. Um, and they did not last long. They got divorced three years after they got married and she cited infidelity as the reason for their divorce. 
Um, do, 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 do. So this is some tea that she spilled. Phil actually grew up in the oil fields of North Texas, like we said, but he was forced to move to Kansas because his dad got the internship doing the psychology thing. And according to Debbie, Phil did not want to move from Texas. She said, Daddy, Daddy, ugh, Daddy made him come up here because he wanted to keep an eye on him. Whatever that fucking means. Um, financial abuse, too, since he's telling her she can't have a job, a.k.a. her own money. T, exactly. Um, so she passed away in 2014. She ended up remarrying and she was a mother to some children. Um, and she apparently died from cancer. So RIP to Debbie Higgins. You seem like really nice and normal. And it seems like you kind of dodged a bullet by divorcing Dr. Phil after just three years. So congratulations to you if you're watching this. Um, so he annulled the marriage in 1973. I'm not sure if they got divorced or if they got it annulled. I saw two different things saying two different things. So I don't fucking know. Um, and if anyone wants to know the difference between a divorce and an annulment, a divorce means like your marriage has legally ended. So like if you have been divorced, you have to bring proof of divorce if you want to get remarried to show like confirming that that marriage existed and ended. An annulment is when it's like the marriage is invalidated. So it's like it never existed. So on paper, you're not divorced. You've never been married on paper. So like you can get an annulment if you get ma if someone like tricks you into getting married or you get married under like false pretenses or something. But you can only get an annulment for like a brief period of time. Like you can't be married for like 30 years and be like, oh, I want an annulment because like, no, you were fucking married. But like Britney Spears after Vegas, I think she got an annulment because it was like short. But anyway, I digress. So 1973, his marriage to Debbie is over and he began dating Robin Joe Jameson and they got married in 1976. I got married at 19 and had it annulled. My mom got her first marriage annulled. Yeah, exactly. Especially if you're like young, a lot of times you can get it annulled. Um, so this is a picture from his wedding. I think it's kind of a little I've never been married. So like maybe I shouldn't be talking shit. But why are you already married three years after you got divorced? Whatever. Just... Just Southern things, I guess. So he recalled how he was ill on a visit to his parents' home and Robin showed up disheveled because she was not expecting to see him. She had on a baggy shorts and a t-shirt and her hair was sticking up everywhere. She looked like a million bucks to me. And that's when he knew that he was in love with her. So whatever. Damn, he aged fast. Yeah. So he he is like 25, 26 here. That man looks 50. He has looked 50 years old since he was in his 20s because they got married in 1976 and he was born in 1950. Like <laughs> me and him are the same age. I just want you to acknowledge that in these photos, Dr. Phil's my age. And for those of you on TikTok, this is why you need to come to Twitch because you need to see the photos and we're having a really fun time over here and it's free to watch and you literally don't even have to make an account. So I don't know how much more I can say to you. Isn't that like, let's think about that. Well, these photos might be from a little bit later, but this photo, this is his wedding. We're the same age. Look at that. He looks like he could be her mob boss uncle. He looks way older than me and I'm 46. <laughs> Twitch is so much better because of the comments alone. Uh, it's the first link on my link tree. We all just need to sit in silence with this. I feel really good about myself. What kind of like he's obviously not using moisturizer. Is he like rubbing his head on concrete every night before he goes to sleep? Um, so this is what Robin McGraw posted on Instagram a while ago for their anniversary. It's a picture of their wedding invitation. Aww. And she said, today is a very important day for us. And it all started with this invitation. When Philip and I met, we were young, poor college students. We both had two jobs each to pay for all the wedding expenses. I remember putting my $99 wedding dress on layaway. To some, this invitation may not look like much, but to me, it looks like an invitation to a royal fairy tale, fairy tale wedding. Looking at it fills me with such joy. It's one of my most cherished possessions. We didn't have much back then, but we had a promise that we would love, cherish, and respect each other for the rest of our lives. After 40 years that promise is still the best gift we could give each other happy anniversary philip i love you so they were poor is really what i think she wanted to get across is it the cursive girl 
<laughs> they got married in Wichita Falls, Texas, a very glamorous place. So he got married to Robin. Um, this says 73, a different thing said 76. One thing we know is he moved on quick. And they also he also graduated underground, underground, undergrad around this time. And then they had kids pretty shortly after. So they got married and graduated in like the mid 70s. Let's just say that we don't know the specific years. They're not great at documenting things. So then they have their first kid in 1979. Um, and then they have their next kid in 19. 19- 1986. So there is a decent um, gap between their kids. Yes, he got married twice while in undergrad. Yep. Got married twice. So he got married like it seems like right when he was pretty young and it took him. It also seems like it took him a while to graduate because that would mean he graduated college when he was like 26. So I guess he was doing the part time thing. This man is insane. Robin had to convince him she wanted number two. Oh, even you know some more lore. Look at that. I feel like I would never be able to convince a man to have a baby because like if you don't want one, okay, I don't want to deal with you not being helpful. So you're not getting one. Great. Like, I feel like what are you gaining by convincing them? You have to you're going to have to do all the work, you know, like they would have to be begging. And then I'd be like, hmm, Maybe. Really took the ring by spring seriously. Imagine getting divorced and being like, fuck, I got to stay in college extra years, get the ring by spring. I can't graduate unwed. And I already got divorced. (sighs) He has a special cushion seat for her on the set and she comes to every taping. Apparently, I did know that he always walks off and then she walks with him. I used to watch Dr. Phil after school a lot. So he graduated in the mid 70s, like we said, from Midwestern State University with a B.A. in psychology. He then went on to get a master's in experimental psychology. So I bet the other one was talking about his master's graduation. I bet that's why I keep finding two different dates. And then he got his Ph.D. degree in clinical psychology in 1979 at North Texas State University, which is now the University of North Texas. And his dissertation was titled rheumatoid arthritis a psychological intervention i was gonna look it up and give you like spark notes but then i realized i don't give a shit at all so that's that on that so he did a year of postdoctoral training in forensic psychology at the wilmington institute his doctoral advisor was frank lawless who later became a primary contributing psychologist for the dr phil tv show after he obtained his doctorate he rejoined his father in wichita falls texas where his dad had established a private practice so he went into the family business of doing psychology and then in 1985 him and his father partnered with Thelma Box, a Texas businesswoman, and presenting Pathways, which was a self-help seminar. And then six years later, he sold his share of that company for $325,000. So seems like that he's just climbing the little psychology ladder. Like he's graduating, doing the private practice thing, doing this partnership, selling his part of that business. He agreed to have a second kid if Robin agreed to not let herself go, meaning that she wouldn't gain weight. That does not surprise me at all. And I think that to be fully bald at age 26 and to have the fucking audacity to say that to another person really lets me know that this person is mentally ill and they are not in the correct state of reality or mind to be again fully bald at your wedding when you are 26 years old your second wedding at 26 years old and to tell your fucking wife to not let herself go when you haven't had hair in over a decade what are you talking about what are you talking about sir how is he allowed to give advice how did this man get on tv um man is a solid three on his best day i'm gonna get banned for hate speech against men again this is a poor stream to be doing on tiktok that's the other reason why y'all need to come to twitch because i keep getting banned on here because the people are afraid of the truth as a truth teller i'm being censored anyway i digress back to philip um where was i and then on october 21st 1988 
things get interesting. The Texas State Board of Examiners of Psychologists determined that Dr. Phil had hired a former patient for part-time temporary employment. Specifically, the board cited a possible failure to provide the proper separation between the termination of therapy and the initiation of employment, and they issued him a letter of reprimand and imposed administrative penalties. I don't know what the fuck an administrative penalty is. I don't know if you have to like pay a fine or go to a class or like do a bunch of paperwork, but yeah, apparently he hired someone that he was doing therapy on which like I've heard worse but I've heard better you know um so speaking of I've heard worse here's the worst the board also investigated claims made by a patient of inappropriate contact initiated I don't know if that means like physical contact or like that he called them on their personal phone at night I don't really know um, so anyway, but the findings of fact issued on October 21st, 1988, at the end of the investigation included no reference to physical contact. It specifically identified the therapeutic and business relationships as constituting McGraw's sole issue with the board. So apparently uh, they investigated those claims, but I don't really know. And he fulfilled all of the term, the terms of the board's requirements, and they closed the complaint file June 1990. So where there is smoke, there is fire. And Twitch is the first link on my link tree where there is smoke there is fire and I think that I would like to speak to all of these people personally 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 um so from being under investigation for inappropriate contact to being on television what an era for him so he founded courtroom sciences inc which is a trial consulting firm he founded it with a lawyer so basically what this is is if you are rich and you are in a legal situation your lawyer will do like a practice with you where they like take you in a fake courtroom and like role play what's going to happen so that you know what to say and you're prepared and you know what's going on so he started a company doing that because obviously psychologists are involved in the court process many many times they determine if people are able to be reliable witnesses they determine if people like people's psychological state they're able to withstand trial like all these different things um the way this stream makes me feel is how i imagine the vanderpump rules community felt about those streams so this is his new era as he's doing this courtroom thing where he would offer advice about what parts of the case worked and what parts would not so this is how he started working with oprah this is where oprah found this man he is no longer a part of this company just for reference and the reason that oprah hired him is because she was in the amarello texas beef trial which we will talk about in a couple of seconds but she was like really happy with dr phil and felt like he was super helpful and super nice and she ended up winning the case um so that's how she got connected with him was because she was like grateful for his help so sidetrack to talk about the Oprah beef situation. So Dangerous Food was a broadcast in 1996 that featured a discussion by Oprah and one of her guests with the possibility that beef cattle in the U.S. either currently were or could would become infected with mad cow disease. Um, So in 1997, a bunch of beef business owners sued her for disparaging statements and it said that they caught that Oprah's broadcast cost them 10.5 million dollars in lost business um and the suit specifically accused Oprah of false disparage false disparagement of a perishable food product whatever that fucking means um So under Texas's food disparagement laws, that means Oprah would be liable for damages and any other appropriate relief. So they did go to court about it and the jury ruled in Oprah's favor and Oprah was super happy and obviously was like happy that that happened to her. And she said free speech not only lives, it rocks because the whole thing was like this is journalism. We were just talking about something like we never said it currently does have it. We just said it could and like inevitably end up becoming a bigger problem like this was just an investigation um I didn't know it was illegal to talk shit about fast food yeah exactly like we can investigate your business and say our opinions about it like it's literally fine um 
So soon after the whole case went down, Oprah invited Dr. Phil to appear on her show. And that appearance was really, really, really successful. And people were really into him. So he came on weekly as a relationship and life strategy expert starting in 1998. So the 90s, like a lot was happening for Phil. Like he made his little courtroom thing and then he man bossed all the way to Oprah. So let me switch the microphone and we are going to watch some Oprah. See, this is another reason. Those of you on TikTok, you need to come to Twitch. You don't get to watch Oprah on YouTube and you guys can't see it there. And for those of you on YouTube, you don't get to watch Oprah when you're on YouTube because it always gets clipped out. Watch it not get clipped out this time. Lady in purple, Violet. Um, if you know that somebody is a taker and it's like involved your family, what do you do about it? Well, you have to decide what you're willing to invest in that person uh, because it is an investment in someone to tell them that and you can tell them and tell them why. You know, I think this you are a taker. This is from 2001, so he's people. been on the show weekly for like three years. I'm going to tell you why. Now, they may not want to hear that and you have to be willing to lose the relationship to do it. You have to go into it. I, when I do those things, I don't play the game with sweaty palms. I'm prepared if somebody says, yeah, also well, Dave just the hell I want with my you, ice roller. get out of my life. But, okay, I'm prepared to do that. But <clears throat> I think it's really important in any relationship how much he that you ask yourself this H's. question. H's. What is my cost for being in this relationship? Because there's a cost DIY. in every relationship you're in. There's a cost. And you have to ask yourself, what is the cost of being in there? Um, if, if the cost is you have to lose yourself, you can't be who you are, do what you do, you, you can't be the person you are because you must conform to them in order to coexist peacefully, the cost is you. What is if he the saying? cost I'm is you have listening. to work at it, that's okay. The cost is you have to make some Just sacrifices, Just his voice that's makes okay. me not listen. But ask yourself in every relationship you're in, what's the cost for being in this relationship? And you'll see real quick whether it's worth the price or whether it's not. All right, man. Um, trigger warning, Dr. Phil talking about sex. Just needed to give the biggest of trigger warnings on that. Our most watched show of our relationship rescue series was on sexless marriage. Ooh. Here's Dr. Phil telling it like it is to a young mother who said she'll do anything to avoid having sex with her husband. <laughs> I think after my first child, I thought, oh, I'm a mother. You know, I'm scared. Moms don't do that. <laughs> Moms aren't. You know, sexy and okay, well, so you stop being I'll say it. A Look at him. wife and a lover and started being a mom. Yeah. <laughs> Are you aware that you made that conscious decision? Yes, I did. I made it consciously. I said I said it to myself. I made that choice to say <clears throat> I'm gonna raise my kids and be their mom and then when they're gone I'll be his wife. No, you won't. <laughs> no, you won't. <laughs> I mean, you won't be his wife Does when you're gone because you're setting it up so that won't last. You're setting it up even... She had some post-birth clarity. See, this is why... Is he literally reverse slut-shaming her? I think so. And this is why you can't have me in these types of situations because I literally would have held her hand. I would have been like, sweetie, thank you so much for sharing that. That was so vulnerable of you. And then I would have looked at her husband and I would say, how many hours per day do you spend cleaning? What percentage of diapers do you feel that you change? Like, I would start interrogating him. I would literally start interrogating him. Where is this woman now? But if you're there, you will be in an emotional divorce because you paralyzed your relationship when your kids were two and three years old and there's no development over the next years. How do you feel when you reach out to her sexually and you get rejected? Sometimes I get angry. I don't okay. know what to do. We start arguing and we take it home and, and you know it just makes it a big big issue if you have a good sexual relationship it's about 10 percent because you enjoy it, it like and you go on to business. the other aspects of the relationship but if you don't it's 90 percent of course it's because anger. it becomes a big barrier between you and you can Colors feel rejected and, and it does it puts up a filter where you resent you start picking at everything and you start picking at Why each other and picking on at national TV and is the picking answer. at work and hey, picking at how the kids are being handled because you're so frustrated 
The quality of a relationship depends on how well it meets the needs of the two people involved. Right. And if you're not meeting you the needs of your wife, right. then she's not going to experience this as high quality and come jump in your arms. And it doesn't have anything to do with a rose on her pillow at night. It has to do with how you make her feel about herself, what you contribute to the relationship that says, I'm here, good or bad, up or down. I'm not just your husband in the bedroom. I'm in your husband. I'm your husband all day long. Okay, that wasn't the worst advice. That part I was fine with, I guess. I'll allow it. I'll allow it. A real psychologist would know that anger is a secondary emotion and call the husband out on that. So true. Literally so true. So, so, so true. Okay, good ending, I suppose. You ate. You ate with that little one. That little one piece. You kind of ate with that. Um, I'm not going to switch the mic because there's more videos in a couple seconds. So this is around the time that Dr. Phil branches out on his own away from the Oprah Cinematic Universe. So in September 2002, he formed Pets Petsky Productions and launched his own television show, Dr. Phil, who produced by um, Oprah's Harpo Studios, which is Oprah backwards. Um, what was that? Dr. Phil was an advice show where he would tackle a different topic in every show and offer advice to his guest. He signed a five-year extension on his syndication deal, and the deal was to pay McGraw $15 million per year and keep the show in production all the way up until 2013. So pretty early from the jump, he signed a very long agreement and then an extension. Um, in May 20 or May 21st, 2007, he was ranked four by Nielsen Media Research, and it was with 6.69 .6 million viewers. I don't know in what category that is. And then later on in 2008, it went down to sixth. And in May 2008, the only talk show more popular than Dr. Phil was Oprah Winfrey's talk show. And in 2007, McGraw was on was 30th on the Forbes Celebrity 100 list. So he was super, super fucking famous at this time. If you grew up at this time, you definitely remember. This is the lost pilot. A pilot is like a pitch of a show. So it's like the very first episode of a show. Oh, this is before Oprah met him. This is from his seminar. Sorry. His spirit. I want to show the beginning of his show. So this is one of his early shows. This is from two thousand and three. So this is like season two of him, I believe. If there's a guy and he's 30 and he's living with his mom, would you say that's a bad sign? Yeah. Okay, that's a bad sign. That could be hurting your dating life. I and you're staying home so you can ride your bike. Yeah. Christopher and Mark are still living at home and they're both pushing 30. We're ready for them to be gone. I'm unemployed. I just finished my university degree. I'm also an amateur athlete. I've got a full-time job where I'm making some fairly decent money. We just aren't ready to move out yet. He looks like he should be on an infomercial selling pillows. We're basically living in, in this house like 16-year-olds. I liken it to Peter Pan syndrome. We enjoy the fruits of the household without actually having to pay for them. Sandra and I look after the shelter, food, utilities, taxes. The living arrangement that we have here is pretty sweet. Some of the advantages are to save money to go on my racing trips and to make my dreams happen. One of the dreams should be having his own place. I've said to both the boys that one day you'll come home and there'll be a for sale sign. I'm in the real estate business, so <laughs> I can make that happen. Hi, Dad. Hi. Hi, guys. What's for dinner? I do all the shopping. I also do all the cooking. They obviously like Stop the food feeding them. Much, otherwise they would have moved up. <laughs> I've told the boys that this is our house. You are guests. The editing if is I making me nauseous. If the bathroom's clean three times a week, then it should be done. We're just trying to get by doing the absolute minimum. I could afford to move, but I choose not to. I enjoy living here. I'm afraid that we've ruined them. They're not going to be successful at going out on their own. Dr. Phil, how do I get my boys to make the decision to move out of the house? Okay, listen. Listen, I, I know that I, I'm just, I, I'm having trouble here, but I, I just don't understand. I mean, you, you want me to tell them they need to move because they'll hear it from me, right? Okay, wh 
why why can't you tell them? We have told them. We have. And? Uh, they're not hearing us very well. <laughs> this is so we 2003. We want you to make a decision that, that you're going to make a plan that you're going to, by so many months, you're going to move out. But not, that has never happened. Well, you know, when I graduated from high school, my dad said, bye. <laughs> I like how everyone's like amazing psychological advice. I love well, it. Well, if you get back this way, <laughs> you're, you're 29, you know? right? I'm 29, yeah. And and you have a job. I do. Professional. Professional job. Job. You get regular pay. That I mean, regular. The OGs of gentle good parenting. Professional. <laughs> yes, I do. Pay. Yeah. Uh huh. Do Do you like Do you date or anything? Um, not not recently, but yes, I I have. Not. I mean, when you're like. Cause you're a good looking guy and all. I mean, you're, so you're like 29 and so you're, you're driving down the street with your day. And she says, where do you live? Oh, it's my mom and dad. Um, that, doesn't that kind of dry up the conversation a little? Yeah, it, it, it tends to. Yeah, yeah, it does. That's why you date occasionally. Occasionally, that's right. A lot of that's, one, that's, that's part of the reason. A lot of one timers. Um, yes, very a lot of Cause, women. Because women, help me out here. If you're, if, if there's a guy and he's thirty, and he's living with his mom, would you say that's a bad sign? I mean, that's a bad sign. That could be hurting your dating life. I and agree. you're staying home so you can ride your bike. Well, I, yeah, I see why people watch it. Well, I get it. Um, I'm heading. I'm heading overseas to race in April. And, right. Can um, you afford that, or, or are they going to That's pay all on my shoulders. Okay. 100%. Are you guys wanting to fund this? No. <laughs> no? We've been there, done that. So he, he does that on his own. Okay. Uh, with his own money. And, and the truth is, so, you are an accomplished athlete, amateur athlete. Yes, this. I mean, it's not like... Reasonably. Here's the thing. Everyone in the comments that's like, why are Americans so weird about multi-generational living... I hear you and I'm seeing you and I respect that. And I completely see the pros of multi-generational living, especially if you have little kids. The thing for me though, and I think I'm sure a lot of people feel this same way, is that yeah, multi-generational living is great if you don't wanna pay rent with dollars, um, but you are paying rent emotionally and it is quite expensive. It is quite, quite expensive. Uh, emotionally taxing to do multi-generational living, I personally feel, but maybe not in other people's families, I'm sure. Sometimes it's great. I'm sure a lot of times people really love it and have a super positive experience. But anyway, that's just kind of the vibes of his show. My fake eyelashes are so itchy right now. But anyway, let's go ahead and get back to yapping and talking. So controversies during this era. In 2002, the California Board of Psychology determined that because his show was more entertainment than psychology, he did not need a license. So shout out to the California Board of Psychology for that one. Um, and in 2003, he lent his name and image to a line of nutritional supplements and um, and the deal stipulated that a certain percentage of the sales would be given to the Dr. Phil Foundation, a charity that works on issues like childhood obesity. So he was a supplement pusher, I guess. And the company stopped producing the supplements in 2004 because the FTC investigated it for false advertising. Three disappointed consumers filed a lawsuit in 2004 and a $10.5 million settlement was reached. Um, and there was a book written about him in 2003 called The Making of Dr. Phil. It was an unauthorized biography and it covered his personal and professional life, including allegations of abuse and unethical practices and interviews of his child childhood friends and former classmates. I tried to find like some lore from the book, but I couldn't find any. And I was not about to read a whole book about that. So sorry if you want to read it. It is called The Making of Dr. Phil and it is by Sophia Dembling and Lisa Gutierrez and published by John Wiley and Sons if you would like to read it. So how do you get away with all this? Talk therapy and nutrition are very different topics. 
when you think Phil McGraw, I hope you think our favorite song. And he stopped renewing his license to practice psychology in 2006. His license was in Texas. He has never had a license in California where his show was taped. So this man is a psychologist in the sense that he went to school for psychology, but he is not a licensed psychologist, so he is not bound by any of those ethical things at all. Because he's not a psychologist. A doctor without ethics can be anything. (laughs) So in 2006, he was named as the co-defendant along with Paramount and CBS Television and others in a 2006 lawsuit filed in the disappearance of Natalie Holloway. Um, Apparently, the lawsuit was filed by... Deepak Kalape and his brother who claimed in the interview they did with Phil with um, Dr. Phil aired in 2005 that she was manipulated and later broadcast as being accurate and it um, depicts them as engaging in criminal activity against Natalie Holloway and constitutes defamation so I don't really know the details of this but um, a court records disclose that the lawsuit was rejected one week before it began so it never actually ended up going through but I just found it interesting that there's like multiple suits against him for like people being upset about things um and later in 2008 McGraw was sued by Thomas Riccio a a memorabilia collector um responsible for taping the Las Vegas robbery that led to OJ's conviction so like really random for that guy to pop up in this story and he sued Dr. Phil in Los Angeles court for defamation and other complaints stemming from an interview he did on the Dr. Phil show in 2008 and the claims were dismissed at the judge finding that it was protected under free speech so I don't really know what happened with this Natalie person I think I like started looking into that and then forgot let me google it really quick Okay, I see what happened. So, no, I don't. I have to be a subscriber. Um, Let's see if this is it. All right, I found an article. Let us read together. So, how Dr. Phil got involved in the Natalie Holloway case. He's a TV personality, blah, 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 whatever. Um, do, 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 do. There's the diet pill line. Apparently, his dog bit someone on the show. I have no idea. Oh, my God. Y'all are really getting into talking about multi-generational living. Wow. Y'all are really getting into it. Um, So, this suit is in question to the 2005 disappearance of Natalie Holloway, an 18-year-old American who disappeared on a trip to Aruba with her friends before she was set to graduate high school. Her body has never been found, but she is presumed dead. And how did Dr. Phil become involved? Um, apparently it's because he hosted a segment about the disappearance about two people of interest. Okay. So these are the people that sued. Cause I guess he had a segment and was talking about it and they were later arrested on suspicion of murder, but they ended up being released. So that's why they sued him. There we go. Now we know. Hopefully that girl like was maybe living a happy life somewhere. Um, oh my God. Y'all are really getting into like political philosophical 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 such discussions in the chat and I just want to talk shit about Dr. Phil <laughs> I'm proud of you though like I love that you guys are using your critical thinking skills also OJ stream I have always debated doing an OJ stream because I think it's a really interesting topic but it's very complicated and it's also like somebody died so I don't really want to joke about it you know one time when I was a kid though I think I've told this story but I'm going to tell it again I was at the grocery store with my mom and OJ Simpson was on a magazine for some reason. And I said, who is that man? And I like had a crush on him. I was like, I love that man. Who is that man? And my mom was like, oh my God, stop it. Because it was literally OJ Simpson. I knew though. I guess I really like saw his eyes and was like, red flag. Love it. Oh, it's harder to hear me. Interesting. What about now? What about now? Okay. Anyway, let's talk about Britney Spears. Um, 
Oh, Rob Kardashian. Interesting. Anyway, let's talk about Britney Spears, I say, for the second time. So another contentious case arose around January 2008 when Dr. Phil went to visit Britney Spears. Oh, Natalie was never found. He faked a recording with a PI and two suspects who were the last people to see her, but it was altered and manipulated to make them look guilty. It took so much attention away from finding her. Oh, my God. That's so sad. <laughs> All right. We're focusing. I'm focusing my contacts. I feel like you just used your teacher voice. <laughs> oh. Okay. Sorry. My contacts are very dry and my eyelashes are fucked up. We're really having a hard time here tonight. <sighs> Britney Spears. He visited her in a hospital room and the visit appeared to be a part of an attempt to getting Spears and her parents to participate in an intervention on Dr. Phil. And like, why would Britney Spears be on Dr. Phil? She does not fucking need you. Um, and immediately after the visit, Dr. Phil issued public statements about Britney's situation. And the Spears family spokesperson at the time said that the family that he violated their trust, the family's trust in him. She said, this is another example of being betrayed rather than helping the family situation. The celebrity psychologist caused additional damage. Cause I guess that I'd skip other teachers class in your room. The way that that's like such a big problem in my life right now. Like the way that today I was like, y'all seriously have to leave. Like I actually, it pains me so much to say this, but like, why have you been in here for literally the whole day? You know? Um, talking about betraying Brittany from her family is rich. So it was reported that the psychologist filed a complaint against the, with the California board of psychology, alleging that McGraw had practiced psychology without a license and had violated the doctor patient privilege by discussing Spears's case with the media. Um, and the copy of the plaint did appear in the media, but there was no like way to verify if it was actually submitted or not. Um, and the former, board of psychology president said on the today show that the incident was not a matter that the law covers or would be concerned about because I get like he's not a psychologist like he's literally not a part of the psychologist community like he is a celebrity so like yeah he really can do whatever the fuck he wants like yeah you let a celebrity just come and talk to her so they're gonna go on tv and talk about it I'm so sorry like I don't know what you want me to tell you and like y'all know my stance on Britney Spears she's been through so much um, and Dr. Phil was unfortunately part of that, but like, why did her parents let him in? Like, he's literally just a guy, like legally speaking, he's just a guy who can do whatever he wants. Um, so let's talk or let's watch him talking about her. And for those of you on TikTok, this is why you come to Twitch. Who asked you to come down to see her? I want to set the record straight. I went to see Brittany at the request of her family. I talked to Lynn. I talked to Jamie. I talked to Brian, her brother. They were very frustrated that she apparently wasn't going to be held for a longer period of time. Thursday night, uh, the phone rang, and it was Lynn. And she has a very close relationship with my wife, Robin. And, you know, clearly she was very upset, which you would expect any parent would be. How long have you been involved in Brittany's situation? I was first contacted by her family uh, over a year ago and have maintained a running dialogue with them uh, throughout the last year. So... He sucks. Of course, he also screwed over Britney Spears, who hasn't at this point. So sit back, relax. We are going to watch some YouTube. We are going to watch some clips from the show just so you guys can see more of the vibe of this television show. Now that you've already seen that when the show first came on, he was already getting sued by people and already doing shady things. Let's see how it progressed and continued. This is Dr. Phil's Philisms. and flopping like a fish. She's on me like a duck on a gym bug. I think I'd be madder than a, a wet hen myself. You got the dumb bird sitting on your shoulder. I feel like I'm picking low-hanging fruit here. We'll just line them up like crows on a clothesline. She's just cute as a speckled pup. Fish or cut bait, buddy. Did somebody slip up and ride stupid on my forehead? I'm a pretty good judge of horse flesh. We're going to go down there and have a donkey barbecue, and I'm going to furnish the ass, right? You can put a lipstick on a pig, but it's still a pig. It's like nailing jello to the wall. 
and is going to open up a can yeah. of whoop bass yeah. on you. <laughs> and I'm just going to call a spade a damn shovel. Look, this, this ain't my first rodeo, I promise you. How's that working for you? How's that working for you? I didn't come in on a load of turnips. You can't change what you don't acknowledge. No matter how flat you make a pancake, it's got two sides. You want to be right or you want to be happy. If there is somebody in this audience who doesn't think this is wrong, then somewhere there is a village missing their idiot. So that's just like some of his random little sayings and idioms. This is a compilation of him just saying the word bitch. You get help, you narcissistic bitch. They know what a bitch you are and said it's a wonder I'm even talking to you. Go ahead. Come on, bitch. Go ahead. You want a piece of me, bitch? Bring it on, bitch. I want it all, bitch. She's a stupid bitch that's going to no. wind up on a stripper pole no. if she doesn't get her act together. You're making this about you, bitch. There you go, bitch. You rotten bitch. <laughs> bitch, go home, but bitch. But the thing is, I want... Shut the hell up, bitch. <laughs> I thought y'all would enjoy that. A lot of those were him like reading quotes from people or him being like, she said that you said to her this, <laughs> but I just really wanted you guys to see it. Robin McGraw sets a bad boy straight on Dr. Phil. She is frequently on the show. <laughs> okay, Robin, what'd you want to say? Oh, thank you. <laughs> to say okay first of all sarah you lose all credibility with me when you say you admire a man who thinks he's a better husband and a better father because he is having an affair a man who has an affair does not have the right to be a husband and a father I'm sorry, I just need to read this comment. Me, Dr. Phil doesn't have a license. Dr. Phil on his show. Shut up, bitch. <laughs> he loses all credibility. An affair does not make you a better spouse. No. And you, you, man. Yes. oh man, <laughs> you, you, in fact, you're ruined for life because I cannot imagine a woman out there who has seen this will want to have anything to do with you. The same man. <laughs> I like her. I don't know. I hate Dr. Phil, no, but... No, hold it, hold it. Let me tell you, you don't want any part of this. No, I'll take it. <laughs> When she walked into Chico's, she came in there to do damage. Look at that outfit. That, that, listen, white boomer women, like this outfit is like, this is my mother and her friends look. It's like fun sweater, pressed white shirt underneath, hoop earrings, lots of jewelry. Like the way she would run a McDonald's, like the Navy. Because he's a real man. Nothing to do with the fact that I have long hair but right. it has to do with the fact that we have respect, dignity, and integrity and he's a man for with each an, other. And he's a man with... Yeah. <laughs> 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 Thank you. You married her! <laughs> he's a, you're, a man with, you're a man with an edge. Yes, I did. Yes, I did marry her. And if I wasn't married to her right now, I would excuse myself, go find her, and ask her. There you go. Let me tell you. Okay, I need a drag queen named after her. This woman is winning. Even if she's losing, she will make sure she is winning. <laughs> okay, and then here's another clip of this 15-year-old. <laughs> you wrote into me. Tell so me what funny. you wanted me to get straight with your mom. I want my mom to understand that I can't live off of $1,000 a month, and I grew up on a certain lifestyle. She can't just take that away from me immediately. If someone took her lifestyle away from her, she wouldn't like that. And I grew up on it. It's all I ever know. I can't deal with this. And so I came to you for help. Okay. So you want me to get her to do what? What would be the home run for you? I need her to... She's 15 and she was the one that wrote into Dr. Phil. Understand that I need at least $2,500 a month. She's not. She works all the time. She doesn't do anything. Why is the daughter me anywhere. talking to the Department of and Education? So other people would have their moms... Like, drive them places, 
buy them food, make them food, but I have to do everything myself, and I need the funds for that. So do you do that it, it, when you... When you have the money, are you in there in the kitchen frying up stuff and mixing up? No, I'm buying food. So you eat out a lot? Yeah. yeah. I make food at home, but then I get bored. It's just I don't like cooking because it just makes a huge mess, and then my mom gets mad at me. And yeah. I don't like cleaning up the huge mess and doing the dishes. And then I just don't like eating at home because it's the same boring food. You say she's out there for you. How do you get to school every day? I do online school. I don't go to school. You don't go to school? I don't go to, like public school for other well, reasons. Why not? Like, I just got traumatized. I can't get into that right now, but, um. You got traumatized. Child. Yes. What's happening? Part of it is that she couldn't keep up Me with the lifestyle. Me on the staff staff. Yes, that's I have heard she is I'm not just, like, being a brat about that. But you don't go to school, do you? So you I do know. online school. Uh, you know, how's she doing? She's doing okay. I had to push her a little bit to get some of those grades up, but, um, when she wants to focus on something, she's doing good. Yeah, and I like it because I... I can like actually focus on it because I mm -hmm. also was behind like in public school. I was really behind because it would go so fast, and so now I can actually take my time. Mm -hmm. So that's nice. And so I don't yeah, he would basically have just have yeah. dysfunctional so families on you... the show. So that's pretty anticlimactic. This girl is kind of spoiled, and they're talking about it. Is essentially what's happening. So people would write into him, and he would have them on the show, and like embarrass them basically and make money off of it is kind of the whole shtick so i felt like this was random as fuck so i wanted to include it in 2012 he founded the telehealth company doctor on demand have y'all ever used doctor on demand it's like urgent care but like facetime it was like one of the first like companies to do that it was an online platform that allowed people to schedule virtual appointments with a network of physicians and therapists they launched a mobile service in 2014 um, and according to ABC News, they have a network of 11,000 board certified physicians and they experienced a ton of increase during COVID, obviously, because people were needing therapy and they were stuck at home. But yeah, he's one of the founders of it, which I felt like was so fucking random. So I just had to include it. He also had a bunch of different spinoff shows. So Jay McGraw and Phil McGraw formed Stage 29 Productions, which um allow which announced a new show called Moochers. So that first thing that was like one of his things with the Moochers, the kids that live at home way past the age people feel they should. Um, ultimately, the show did not end up getting produced, though. But in 2006, he also started the Dr. Phil House, similar to Big Brother. But following a protest by neighbors, the house in L.A. was shut down and production resumed on a sound on a sound stage in a studio instead so it's really not a house um then they launched decision house which is had the lawyer from divorce court where couples had to decide if they were going to get married or not or if they were going to get divorced or not i mean and then he also he began promoting the spinoff the doctors which first aired in 2008 hosted by tv personality and er physician travis stork and his eldest son jay mcgraw was executive producer of that show he's big on the nepo baby like he was a nepo baby for psychology so he's putting his kids into tv and that's their nepo thing um it did not have very good ratings, but it won a daytime Emmy Award as an outstanding talk show, and it was renewed for its 12th season in 2019. Um, do, 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 do. Some more awards, blah, blah, blah. He also had a reality TV series called House Calls, where he visited families at home and offered advice on their home life. That was in 2021, I guess, because of COVID things. So now that we know the vibes and we know some of the bad things he's done, let's get into the really, really bad things he's done and a lot of the reasons why I specifically do not like him. So these are some of his controversies 2016 to present, according to Wiki. So in 2016, him and his wife filed a $250 million defamation lawsuit against American Media Inc., a publishing company that owns National Enquirer and Radar Online. Um, because of their publishing of an interview, their former patient had accused Dr. Phil of sexually assaulting her in the 1980s whilst under his care. He denied the allegations um, since they were first made against him in 2002, and that lawsuit was later dropped on mutual terms. So 
what that says to me, it was probably a settlement of some kind in that lawsuit. Um, he was also criticized for an interview with actress Shelley Duvall, um, where Vivian Kubrick described his behavior toward Duvall as exploitative and appallingly cruel and called for a boycott of the show. Um, he also got PPP loans, which a lot of people were really upset at. And according to newly released documents, Dr. Phil's production company received $7 million from the Paytech Paycheck Protection Program, which was the federal plan designed to help small businesses during COVID. I personally don't feel that um, he is a small business. I'm not the IRS, but just off of the vibe, I think a small business is less than 50 people. Um, Stage 29 Productions, run by Phil McGraw and his son Jay, got a loan valued between $1 million and $2 million. The company makes programs for the TV shows, um, and was on the list of recipients disclosed on Monday by the Small Business Administration. This article is like a year or two old that I pulled this from. So Dr. Phil's other production company, Petsky Productions, also got a loan valued between 2 to $5 million. And the same day that those numbers were reported, again, we don't have proof of this. There is no proof. No proof. Again, I will say there is no proof that fraud was done. What I will say is the same day that they got the loans, his youngest son paid $10 million cash for a mansion. So your dad and older brother get around $8 million in PPP loans, and then you buy a $10 million mansion the next day. Interesting. Oh, how do you make the PowerPoint scroll? It's on Nearpod, and Nearpod actually just came out with an update where you can't do this, and I'm still using the old version. And I just want to say for any Nearpod people watching this, if you're here, that update is really bad, and you should take it back and shove it back where it came from. Loan is a strong word because no one's going to pay <laughs> back just small business things so again there's no link whatsoever between the loans and these purchases but they were one day apart and again why are you taking government handouts for small businesses you're literally dr phil um and this all comes after Dr. Phil had already apologized in April of 2020 because he was on Fox News and he was questioning why lockdowns were necessary and said, we don't shut the country down because of deaths from car accidents and swimming pools. And he wrongly claimed that 360,000 people die in swimming pools every year. <laughs> That's so wrong. 360,000 people. What's the actual number? Many people die in pools per year. No, don't use my location. Ugh, it only goes by state. Okay, there's around 4,000 drownings per day. Not per day. 4,000 drownings per year, which is 11 per day. And that is for everything. That's the ocean too. Yeah. 4,000 drownings per year. He said $360,000. Not this $360,000. What's wrong with me today? Anyway, he declined to comment when people, 4,000 equals 360,000. He'd be talking. So the actual number is 4,000. He said there were 360,000 people who die in swimming pools each year. So, um, and I could not find if he did pay back those loans. I don't think... I have no idea. And like you said, most people are not paying them back. And he really has not commented on all of this. So let's discuss the house that his son bought. So not only did his son buy the house the day after they received roughly that amount in PPP loans, the house is also horrifying. The house is one of the most intense things I've ever seen, if we're going to be honest. I originally thought of doing Dr. Phil because I was going to show you this house last week when we were shaming the rich. But then I was like, I should just do a whole stream about Dr. Phil because I bet something is there. Um, so right off the bat, I am not loving the gun wall, not loving the gun wall. Also not loving the like children-esque sculptures, the little rabbit bench of sorts and then that appears to be one orange gummy bear and one gray stone gummy bear um don't love that not loving that so let's get into more outside is fine 
I would not have chosen black umbrellas and drapes, but that's fine, I guess. Interesting. So like it's supposed to look like you painted the pool table while you were in there, I think is what the goal with that was. Um, I would love to know whose creative decision it was to put the godfather on for the listing photos. I am wondering that. I do like the purple couch bed. I like that. I hate the decor around it and I hate the floors and walls. Um, but I'm more wondering about the godfather on the television and the little bunny statue I'm still wondering about. Another room. Interesting chairs and ottoman. Um, are those snakes or vines? I'm a little confused about the staircase. The giant lips in the corner is also confusing me. And then the gun wall is just as surprising as the first time that I saw it. Um, I think these are snakes. I think these are supposed to be snakes on this railing. This does look AI generated. Again with the art... The fuzzy ottoman table. I I prefer a traditional table, personally. <sighs> okay. Uh, you lost me with the neon Cheshire cat. You really did. You had me at some very brief fleeting moments. And then you just fully, fully, fully lost me. I'm gone. I'm so gone. I'm. You had me and you lost me. Um, so yeah, that is what our tax dollars may or may not have gone to. So that is some more like, haha, funny, let's make fun of his furniture before we get into some really horrific shit. So let's talk about the ranch. Trigger warning, this does talk about the abuse of different types of abuse in it throughout this thing. We don't get anything that's too, too graphic. Same as always, I try and keep it like who, what, when, where, and not here's like a graphic detailed accounting of it. So this is from a Rolling Stone article um, within the first two weeks at Turnabout. So again, I probably should have like prefaced this a little bit more um, on his show. A very common thing that he would do was send these teenagers to the ranch, which is those troubled teen camps. Paris Hilton went to one of them. We've talked about them a few times on here. So it came out later. Some of especially the girls that were on the show came out and talked about their experiences on the ranch so we're talking about how they came oh this is troubled teen industry related it is yes Paris Hilton I don't think she went to his but she went to was it turnabout ranch I don't know I don't remember Paris Hilton also went to a couple different ones but anyway these are some of the girls that spoke out about their experiences in these situations um and they were sent there after being on his show his advice to the parents was send them to this place so Within the first two weeks at Turnabout Ranch, a male staff member came up behind me and suddenly grabbed my butt. I decided not to tell anyone because I was scared of being punished. I hoped that he would not touch me again. Sadly, I was wrong. Hannah Archuleta, age 19 when this came out, which was like two or three years ago, I think, says she was shipped off to the ranch in Utah when she was 17 after appearing on an episode of Dr. Phil. A Colorado teen who alleges that she was sexually assaulted at the Utah facility for troubled youth is suing Dr. Phil and violated Viacom CBS for negligence, alleging that the star of the popular Dr. Phil show and his staff recommended and arranged for her treatment at Turnabout Ranch. She says in her complaint filed in L.A. Superior Court that when she was shipped off to the ranch um, when she was 17 after appearing on that episode in October of 2019. A 26-page complaint obtained by Rolling Stone claims that Dr. Phil and show staff made glowing statements about the ranch and pressured her dad to send her there while immediately negligently failing to mention the various complaints and charges of physical and emotional harm that befell minors sent to the facility. The lawsuit says one red flag involved in a 2012 lawsuit claiming the ranch subjected a 15-year-old girl with threats of suffocation and physical abuse that led her bleeding, sleep deprivation, and stress positions akin to torture. Archuleta and her lawyer, Gloria Allred, we've talked about Gloria Allred before, 
say in a lawsuit that Dr. Phil, who holds a doctorate in clinical psychology but is not licensed to practice, pulled Archuleta's dad into his private office before they appeared on front of a live studio audience and personally vouched for Turnabout Ranch. Hannah needs to go to the ranch for, to have any chance at a good life. It's that serious that we help her right now and today. At the ranch, Hannah will be in a safe environment, eat well, be treated well, and have multiple therapies. The lawsuit claims that Hannah's parents were sold a segment we're told a segment produced uh, Hannah's parents told a segment producer about that their daughter had struggled with suicidal thoughts and alleges that they were warned not to bring up that issue again for liability purposes. After the show taping, Hannah was taken directly from the sound stage in Los Angeles to the ranch in Utah. There, she was sexually assaulted twice by a mass, uh, by a male staff member, the lawsuit claims. So that was from like the main Rolling Stone article about this. This is from a Australian news outlet. We already read this beginning part. Um, after the second alleged assault, Archuleta reported it to staff and claimed that they took no remedial action and retaliated by subjecting her to further abuse. So after she had reported the second time that he grabbed her, she said, I was required to spend extra time picking up horse manure, walking in circles around a horse corral, sitting at a desk facing a wall for hours. I also had to do forced labor outside and below freezing temperatures and sleep on a wooden plank with no pillow. She's 19 when this was written i think she's 22 now justice and i do not want what happened to me to happen to anyone else turnabout ranch strongly denies the allegations stating that the account given by opposing legal counsel to the media was incomplete to say the least um and we already talked about the 2012 lawsuit and the report from or the report found that these predated dr phil's referral and doc and the turnabout ranch website um talks about their long-term relationship with dr phil so there were complaints against them before he sent kids there while he sent kids there and still to this day um this is what i found from reddit Sorry, but if anyone tells me a kid has to go to this place specifically to get help, not just like somewhere to get help, I'd be like immediate red flag. So this is what I found from Reddit. Let me drink water. Sorry. So this person said, my family found out about Turnabout Ranch through Dr. Phil in 2012 and decided to send me there at 13 after multiple short term short stay inpatients. I was actually at inpatient at the time when I was gooned and driven 12 hours to Utah. The staff told me that my mom was out front and when I got there they put me in an SUV with no inside door handles and the windows cracked about two inches. My mom walked up to me walked up to the window and told me goodbye. I spent Halloween, Thanksgiving, and Christmas at Turnabout Ranch and was discharged sometime in February. I was so young and so medicated at the time. I don't remember much of my time there, to be honest, but it was scary. I was the youngest person there, and everyone seemed to be especially mean to me for that reason. It was extremely isolating. I'm 23 now and have nightmares regularly about it, and to this day, I can't be around a campfire. I have such a hatred in my heart for Dr. Phil. So not only do we have to think about the kids that Dr. Phil literally sent there, you have to think about this is literally happening on fucking television. So a lot of people are watching that and they're like, I should send my fucked up kid to get more traumatized at Turnabout Ranch. Um, so this is also relevant to um, those of you who may know her as the Cash Me Outside girl or Bad Barbie. Um, she was sent to Turnabout Ranch when she was 13 after appearing on an episode of Dr. Phil. So this is her. You're probably familiar with her. She's very, very famous now. So let's discuss Dr. Phil and Danielle. That's just her name. Danielle Bregoli. Her, her stage name is Bad Barbie. Bad Barbie? Is that her? bad bar I don't know how to say that um so she first appeared on Dr. Phil with her mother Barbara Ann the tension between the two would come to a breaking point Barbara Ann told the show that she would rather hand her daughter over to the authorities at this point after Danielle falsely reported to police to police that her mother was a drug user the mother also detailed how Danielle had stolen credit cards cash and even purchased a stripper pole with the money bad baby oh unironically Gucci flip-flops was my number one song last year say it in Australian. So while filming, um, Danielle lived up to her bad rap and stole a crew member's car for a joy ride and coined her iconic phase when reacting to these hoes in the audience yelling, cash me outside. How about that? Where she means catch me outside. How about that? Um, so this is her on the show way back when this is her first appearance on the show. 
Everything has to be Barbara Ann's way or no way. She'll go after me. Good, good, bitch. Like, if I tell her, like, hit me, she'll try to hit me, and I got to, like, dodge her. Because if she hits me, I, I'm giving it to her. I'm pretty violent. I must turn the face because she wouldn't get out of my face. Either I'm breaking down her door or she's breaking down my door. I don't stop till I start seeing dents in the door. <laughs> She's so over exaggerated. But she'll be like, oh, she threw boulders at my window. The pebbles are like this little. She'll threaten me. If you don't do this or that, then I'm going to call she the PO. She was so young. You got one more time to hit me, Danielle. You got one more. I ran out four times in one day. And the cops brought me back every time. She wants me to be sent away. You want me just as bad? Put me in jail. Not the cigarette. So, tell me... How they're pinning her to what be the bad you guy. Think she's you're doing. She's literally 13 years old in this video. That contributes to this chaos and this problem. I don't behave disrespectful. I steal cars. I steal her credit card. I ain't gonna lie. There's no reason to lie. Everybody know already. Like, what do you say to yourself that gives you the right to take somebody else's car? This is so South Florida public school. <laughs> That's what they do. <laughs> what the next bitch car? I'm sorry, I didn't get that. You speak English? Let's run that back. The right to take somebody else's car. It's not gonna be slime. F you mean? That's the way we want to take the next bitch car. What now? I'm sorry, I didn't get that. You speak English? And her mom's laughing. Do you have an accent of some sort? Tell them where it comes from. You know. <laughs> from the street. Oh. Okay, so <laughs> tell me again, wh what is it you say She's yourself literally that from my gives hometown. you the right to take somebody else's car? I don't say anything to myself. I just say, all right, that's a car. There's some keys right in front of me. I know where the car at. You know where the car at. <laughs> she is did so you, 13. Like, this is so developmentally. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm asking, how far did you go? Well, how, I stopped in seventh if you want to get technical. You stopped at the seventh grade. Uh -huh. So you did go through the fifth grade. Yeah, I did. Okay, I'm just curious. Okay, so you just take it and you don't consider that it belongs to someone else no your keys in my room you're asking for it you don't leave your keys in a part in someone's room when they've stolen cars before like you asking for it um i probably so wouldn't have left my what keys do you around think her if we're is being going honest to happen when you happen to steal somebody's car that disagrees with that and decides that they're going to drop a hammer on you and prosecute you to the full extent of the law. Then I do my time in jail. Jail ain't nothing. That's what I always do, and they never catch me. Ain't nobody going to catch me. Because you're too streetwise? Yup. And all these hoes laughing like something funny. She's talking about the audience. That they're laughing at her. Did, did you say the, the, the hoes are laughing? Yep. So the audience are a bunch of hoes? Yep. I forgot that this was from that. Why are they clapping? Fear tactics are not going to work on her. Catch me outside. How about that? Catch you outside? Not the mom translating. What does that mean? What I just said. Catch her outside, and she'll go outside and do what she has to do. That's what she's talking about. Oh, yeah, this yeah, is okay, all, yeah. This is all, but don't you see that this is all mouth? This is mouth. Oh, do so you want to take this outside? Because I think they can break cameras outside. Really? Because I think I flipped you. You want to do it again? Danny, don't get all tough. Please don't. This is not the place. Hey, this is not sit the down. Place. Sit down. All right, Danny. Sit down. She looks so little. Like, when she gets up, she's just so little. She's literally just a child, and I'm so reminded of that. And, yeah, fear tactics are literally not going to work on her at all. Literally not going to work on her at all. Not that anyone asked me, but this is my personal belief about what I would have done in that situation if I was the adult. I think that that is attention-seeking behavior. Clearly, this girl needs attention. So you have to literally be like so, 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 so intentional 
with the attention that you give. Like if she was talking to me that way, I literally just sort of fully ignored her, fully, fully ignored her and literally only speak to her if she's being respectful and like doing what she needs to be doing. Because clearly that's an attention seeking behavior. So I'm not going to reinforce what you want and give you attention when you're speaking to me like that. So you can come to me when you would like to speak to me respectfully. Shoop. You're done. What I say at school, blocked. You're done. <laughs> so Dr. Fell hoped for a transformation when he sent Danielle to turn about ranch. That's what he said. I think he's a little liar. Um, he said that there was a residential program specializing in modeling and shaping honesty, accountability, responsibility, and teamwork in troubled teens. In other words, trying to convince the 13-year-old that stealing cars was not the way to go. There she was responsible for caring, caring for a small horse named Chief, who she seemed to share a few personality traits with her. She said, I guess it's because he's so little and he thinks he runs stuff. Later, she came out with more info at the ranch we will discuss. So this was originally what she said at the time. She appeared changed by her experience at Turnabout Ranch. She said, I just feel okay with who I am now. I don't have to put on a front to impress anyone. And workers at the ranch commented about the progress she had made, saying Danny went from being this tough girl to just a normal kid. A lot of people didn't think she could do it. She proved them all wrong. Her feelings soon changed when she returned home, only to push the boundaries of the behavior contract Turnabout Ranch helped set up. So Barbara Ann conceded that she'd learned to pick her battles, claiming her daughter's addiction to her phone and skipping school was better than stealing cars or running away. That is pretty valid. So she went back on her. She went back on Dr. Phil and cre um, coined another snarky phrase saying, I guess what's good for you is I made you just like Oprah made you. You were nothing before I came on this show. And then the same week that she returned on Dr. Phil, she was also banned from Spirit Airlines along with her mom and another passenger. After Barbara took too long to put the luggage in an overhead bin, a passenger began to cam complain. Um, and so Danielle punched the passenger to defend her mother. So the passenger made a citizen's arrest, which like literally what the fuck? Um, but no actual arrests were made other than her getting banned from Spirit. She also starred in a Florida rapper. I don't know who this is. In Breakout, the Breakout Florida rapper. Who was that? Why didn't they put their name in there? Um, she starred as the in a opener to his mixtape. Um, but there's nothing as exciting or unexpected as about the appearance. She sits on a Rolls Royce lip syncing and then she became super famous later we're not really going to discuss her music career or any of that this is not a stream about her this is a stream of us talking shit about Dr. Phil but just her context she is extremely extremely famous now and we are going to talk more about her in relation to Dr. Phil just not about her own career and her own right feel free to google that if you would like so this is the second time that she came on show so this is after she was out turnabout ranch so tell me about turnabout ranch it's a program yeah how did you do there fine what was your oh it's favorite part of it chief <laughs> yeah you like the horse saying how'd you think she did i thought she did very well i i really saw a difference in the way that she was she acting, looks so sad and uncomfortable also the way that she led and was an example to the other girls. Are you glad you went? Yeah. You think it'll help you long term? Yeah. Do you have any idea what you want to do long term? I want to be a nurse. And what about the anti-bullying? Explain to him what were people contacting you on Instagram? What were they saying bullied. to you? Um, bullied. How do you how do you have that voice? How do you the way you said that all this stuff to Doctor Phil? How how you did all that stuff? You've gotten a lot of tension on the internet since you were here. Is that a good thing or a bad thing? Both. What's good about it? Well, I guess what's good for you is I made you just like how Oprah made you. You were nothing before I came on this show. Thank you for that. No problem. Are you going to pursue kind of a <laughs> Imagine waking up from surgery image? and she's your nurse. Yeah, I guess so. As long as it doesn't interfere with who you really are. No, oh, of course. You spent all day yesterday uh doing a shoot with the pizza slime blog yeah. is that fun for you yeah see i i told your mom i i think it's funny 
it's great to have fun. I, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. As long as you do the other things too. Of the, you have to admit, he helped you a lot. If it wasn't for Dr. If it wasn't okay, for Okay, if it wasn't for his money, you can't Danielle. say it wasn't for him. Danielle. No, if no. it wasn't for him and his people, I would Wait not been the way I how am. did you get there? Okay, it was his money, it wasn't him. No, of course it was him. Of course it was him. I could have paid for it myself. You think so? Damn right. No. Damn if right. it wasn't for him, if it wasn't for Dr. Phil, listen, Dr. Phil could have probably sent you anywhere in the United States. He knows places all, you think he sends every kid to a turnabout? He don't. Yeah, No, he, he don't. <laughs> There's many places he could have sent you well, to. He picked Turnabout for a reason. You have to say thank you. You have to say at least thank you. Because he did it. Thank you. Dr. Phil, thank you Dr. very Phil, much. Dr. Phil, thank you very much. You're welcome. I didn't think I'd leave here with a new respect for Bad Bar. So this is what she spoke about in 2021. So again, where she said, oh, the horse, it was helpful, whatever. That was all when she was a minor right after she was there. This is a longer video. I think we probably are going to watch the whole thing if I'm being 100% honest with you. Um, and this is where she's speaking out about the abuse at Turnabout Ranch. I was 13 years old when I went to Turnabout Ranch. I feel like it's very important for me to speak on this because I kept my mouth shut for so long. I did touch on it a couple of times in different situations, but I really want to get my whole story out there and let everything just be out because that's the thing with these places is you have no evidence. You don't have a phone there. They don't have cameras there. Like there's no evidence of none of this. And obviously all the staff is in on it. So they're not going to snitch on each other. All you really have is the kids that are there. So a young lady, her name is Hannah. She recently um, spoke out because while she was there, she so was this is... uh, sexually assaulted. And then when she... So let me just kind of like clarify the timeline. Bad Barbie's on the show. A couple years go by. Hannah comes and speaks out about this. We talked about Hannah. That was that Rolling Stone article. When Hannah spoke out about it, Bad Barbie was like, yes, that happened to me too. And by this time, she's super, super famous. Like, she's super famous. She's won, like, awards for her music and stuff like that. She reported that she was assaulted. Uh, she was punished by staff. Now, when I seen the punishment she was given, I knew, like, okay, I, I really have to say something. Like, I really have to have her back on this because I, I truly believe that they did that. So, Dr. Phil, I'm going to give you from now till April 5th to issue an apology, not only to me, but to Hannah and any other child that you sent to Turnabout or any other program like this. And if you don't, I'm gonna handle things my way. Dr. Phil should be literally quaking at that. Like Dr. Phil should be shaking in his boots at that statement. Also for those of you on TikTok, um, come to Twitch so you can see the videos. Mwah, love you. So that's a lot, let's keep going. Somewhere in the middle of August, I went I went on the Dr. Phil show, and my mom and my grandma knew they were sending me here. I didn't know I was going. I went school shopping right before, because the school was supposed to start when I got home from LA from doing the show. So part of the whole Dr. Phil show is they send these kids to either Turnabout or these other programs that are also in Utah, but they're all wilderness programs, and they're all fucked up. Okay, so Turnabout is in the middle of Escalante, Utah. It's a very, 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 very small town. It's got one gas station, one one grocery store. Everybody knows everybody there. You see you're in the middle of nowhere. You know there's nowhere to run. If you try to run out there, you're either, they're gonna find you, you're gonna get in more trouble, or you're, if you do get away, you're gonna get eaten by a coiote or something. Cause took in there against my will. They give you transporters. Um, what if we said Bell to Turnabout? Two people, a male and a female that come in in the middle of the night. They don't tell them where they're going. They just take them, they handcuff them, them, they put them in the car it's basically like wait the parents know they're gonna be shipped off before they even go to the show so it seems like what that other girl's story was is the parents go to the show and the show's like yes come to the show we'll help you and then like the day before or the morning before they're like you should send them here we can have them taken tomorrow we'll pay for everything it's really the best thing for you to do so i don't think the parents or the kids know when they get there but then the parents make a decision and then they get shipped like right after the show Kidnapping. Film. We got there. I got out of the car and I just seen it was like it looked like nothing. It was just super dark. I seen like all the circles and stuff and I seen the little cabin and I was like, oh shit, I'm not built for this. Like I'm this little bougie ass. So for the first three days you're there is no showering. 
they put you in a circle, which is a, it's a TP. It's a little TP, but it's open. And you have to sit there for three days. They wouldn't let me lay down for nothing. Like, I was falling asleep and they were like, uh-uh, get up, get up. So I'm just sitting here like, this is gonna be really bad. When I seen these people have no sympathy, I was like, oh, I'm really, like, I'm really doomed. They strip you from your whole personality. You have to act like just whoever they want you to act like. They told me, okay, these are what your chores are gonna be. I don't remember what they were, but they were like, these are what your chores are gonna be. This is what you're gonna be doing. Here's your level one binder. You do the same thing every day. Oh, Chop so this wood, is human take care of the animals. <laughs> this place is all about taking away privileges. Like, okay, yeah, the phone is a privilege, TV, like all that. But they take away like necessity privileges, like sleeping on a bed, eating good food, not being cold. I remember the first time I got in trouble. Now, I, this is my first time being here. Like, I don't really, like, yeah, y'all explain to me. And again, to clarify where she was like, I'm gonna handle things my way. This is before she's handling it her way. So by handling it her way, she doesn't just mean I'm going to talk about it. She's talking in detail about it and said, Philip, watch your fucking back. I mean, the rules, but I'm 13. Like, I don't really know, like, exactly what I'm supposed to be doing. There's been times where I, uh, I reported um, another student acting inappropriate or um, just anything like that. Didn't even have to do with me, and I would get in trouble for just witnessing it. If you reported a ch another kid, like, getting bullied by like their peers or something, they would just say, well, maybe that's what they need or like something like that. Even though there was written rules, if if a staff was angry at the moment or if you just did something that they felt was bad, you they, you would get your own punishment. Like they would make up their own punishment for you. It's really frustrating because even if you don't know the rules, if you fuck up, you're still in trouble. It's, there's not no, I didn't know. You're still, you're still in deep shit. Shit that's minor is major to them. So if you do something like the tiniest, tiniest thing, you get a check. If not, you have to be on reflection. Reflection is the punishment. When you do something so bad, or if you do anything that ticks them off, you have to go on reflection. You walk in the arena for hours on end. You sit outside in the cold on the on the floor. You have to pick up piles in a wheelbarrow of horse shit, and they want big piles. So if you have it to do 25 piles, campus. you're really doing like... 50 wheelbarrows. So while I was there, just a lot of crazy things happened. I seen a kid get held down for trying to leave. Just honestly, I don't think he was trying to run away. I think he was just trying to like walk out the door and just like get some time to himself and they restrained him, they held him down. They they had no problem holding kids down, which is against the law. You're not supposed to touch the kids, but they had no problem doing that. It's just our word against the staff's word when you're there because there's no witnesses, there's no cameras, you don't have a phone, there's none of that. That's why I was always so scared to speak out because it's like, no one's gonna believe me. A lot of things that like happened to me there, I was, it, it hurt me so bad because I was genuinely like confused. I'm writing letters to my mom like, mom, I will do anything. Like, you don't understand what this place is like. Like, you can't do this to me. Like, I will do anything, I'll do that. And they prime the parents for that. They like tell the parents, like, they'll say anything. They're lying, they're manipulating you. They like prime the parents to not believe the kids. Therapy every day, like, I will go through an uh, out, uh, outpatient program, all that, like, just please let me come home. The staff when I got there was this dude, Jimmy, and this dude, Ted. These are the night staff. Two of the night staffs around me, they were really, really sweet. Paris escaped like three times. Yeah, watch the Paris Hilton One morning stream. I was cleaning up for breakfast and- Trigger warning, they're gonna talk about a death. One of the staff was sitting right next to me and she had her walk on her, so I heard everything. Uh, one of the kids, he had tried to steal a car or something. Everyone was screaming on the walkies like it was really crazy. And he ended up killing one of the staff members. They made all the kids that were at Roundy come down and then they didn't, they told us not to tell us anything. A day later, they have us all, all every kid that's at Turnabout, they have us all sitting in a circle and they're like, listen, there was an incident. I know some of y'all heard it over the walkies, Jimmy died. And so we're all freaking out because Jimmy was, like I said, he was one of them that was there the first day I got there. He was really sweet. Not only did Jimmy die, but one of the right, other Jimmy. staff members that was there at the time, Alicia, who was the daughter of the nurse. Alicia, she was um, also injured. And two years later, she died. And she was also left disabled after being attacked by Clay. So the mother of um, the kid Clay who killed the staff she was married to the brother of the president of the program, which I also believe is- So to clarify what she just said, the young man who murdered the staff member, his mother is married to a man. That man's brother is the president of this program. 
So, like, basically that kid isn't going to face as many consequences is what she's trying to say. It's a conflict of interest. I don't know why they would do that. Anymore. So it was really sad. Like, so, like, why are you sending your kid to a program that a family member owns? That's kind of a conflict of interest. They wouldn't tell us what happened and all that. And any of the kids that were there, like, they couldn't talk about it. But they were, like, really traumatized by it. Even the ones that weren't there were traumatized by it. Like, I heard it over the walkie. Like, that's scary. Like, like so you got kids here that are killing people. And like I said earlier... My mom had always threatened me as like, oh, I'm sending you away, I'm sending you away. But she never did it. This was the first time she really did it. Like, I I never thought my mom would do this. So what parents need to understand is if your child is acting out because of trauma, like sexual abuse, or maybe like the kid's parents got divorced or just anything like that, you don't send your kid to a program like this. You need to send your kid to a program where they're not being punished and, and it's not about everything's not about you're in trouble you're in trouble and it's just it's just really fucked up you're you're just using children to keep your ranch going and you're not even feeding them or letting them sleep in decent condition just doing things that no one would ever want done to their child and not even that and and, and doing it to kids who are so helpless and when you know that you're watching their letters, you know that they don't have any contact with their parents. So I don't, I'm not really sure why Dr. Phil still sends kids here. It just, it really doesn't make sense. Like, are you trying to help them or are you trying to hurt them even more? Cause I mean, we all know he's a phony as it is, but like, don't be sending kids somewhere just to make, make it look like you're trying to do something. There was already lawsuits before I went there. There's now many more after, but there was one as far back as 2012. Now this place has been going since the nineties, I think. So I could just imagine like how much bad stuff is happening. She clocked him from the first minute that have she happened. went on. Yep. Just the abuse, the the malnourishing, physical abuse, mental abuse, all that. And this place is still up and running. It just doesn't make sense. How, how could you not know about the murder? It was on national, like, national news. How could you not know about that? So that is the video that she posted March 19th, 2021 with breaking code silence to kind of call out Dr. Phil. He responded to this. He said, she went to turn about four or five years ago. If she had a bad experience, obviously I would hate that. We'd be sorry about that. We don't have anything to do with what happens with guests once they leave the stage. That's between the guardian and the parent in whatever facility they go to. We're not involved in that. We don't have any feedback from them. So whatever happens when they're in that facility, that's between them and family. And we're going to watch her response video to this. So this is what she posted after he said that in an interview. We were going to watch his interview, but it's dumb and I don't care about what he has to say. So I just took the most important quotes. I didn't need to hear his rambling trying to defend himself. Time and a quarter speed. I hope everyone is okay with that. Um, it's just a little slow for me. Anything like that, we'll continue to reach out so we have more and more stories. Actually, we're going to put it on less than time and a quarter. We'll do 1.1. It said, where was it? Do, 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 do. And they go, to be honest, I think it came from her mom conditioning her to talk that way. I think it does too. And we'll talk more about her mom in a little bit. So it's all your time. So, yeah. Interesting. Um, and she recently found out, this was published December 2023, so she has continued to call him out for his behavior very publicly. Um, and so she found out recently, she was on a podcast with Emily Ratajowski, I think is how you say her name, M. Rata. Um, and she said, imagine you get home from being in this fucking fucked up place for fucking six months and you open your phone and go on Facebook and all you see is yourself and you're 13. So imagine she gets sent to Turnabout Ranch. She comes out and sees herself viral all over the internet. She went on to say she was left thinking, I didn't kill nobody. I didn't touch nobody, kid. I didn't kill no puppy. Why am I here? Even the worst of the worst don't get treated like that. And she said that she didn't find out the whole truth about her appearance until she was 19. She said she found out on her 19th birthday that her mom had been emailing Dr. Phil since she was two years old. So someone who said they think that her mom conditioned her to speak that way, that's why that really rang true for me because since she was two, she had been reaching out to Dr. Phil to like, get her to be on TV, basically. 
And she said, my mom is a very narcissistic person and like narcissists, they like a crowd figuratively and literally. They like a crowd because they feel like, well, I can't convince people who really know me so I can convince others whatever narrative I want to play. So she didn't let the newfound viral fame go to waste. Like we said, she was super successful in music. And then as soon as she turned 18, she signed up for OnlyFans. I will tell you why I'm bringing this up. It becomes relevant in a second. So she signed up for OnlyFans. She charged around $24 a month. And she pulled in $1 million within six hours of joining the platform. Literally, like this, it was like, at midnight, I'm 18. Here's my OnlyFans, which really does not sit right with me at all. But this the way she answered this. She was later asked in an interview whether those who subscribe to her OnlyFans right away should be in jail, and she said, yeah. <laughs> I love the way she reads people. Like, she literally, like, was like, all y'all should be in jail. That's gross that y'all did that. Send Phil, send Barbara. Go to jail. So this came out, oh my God, I can't believe it's already been two hours. This is a long one too. So this came out February, 2022. I kind of wanted to finish off like her storyline and then get into this new one where basically people have said that it is a very, very violent and like terrible workplace and very, very toxic. Everyone was pretty much miserable. You would walk into the building and there would be palpable dread and anxiety. Dr. Phil, the show about mental health where everyone you work with has terrible mental health because our work conditions were so bad. Um, another former employee said the only brief reprieve they got was during their summer hiatus when they would take a break from filming. And they said, I would have nightmares. I would literally be working in my sleep and have nightmares about something being wrong or not turning something in the right way. Even when I quit, I had to go to therapy for it, which is crazy because you're working for a therapist. And a lot of people spoke with BuzzFeed News about this. Um, and witnessed Dr. Phil directly engaging in toxic and abusive behavior that they said they experienced from others on the set or believe that he saw the abuse. So two of the 10 employees on his show said that it was common to be screamed at or berated by the executive producer. I don't think I ever switched my mic back. Um, said it was common to be screamed at or berated by the executive producer. Um, how can he not know? Because it was so, so common and was just happening all over the place. Seven of the employees um, said that they were encouraged to perpetrate racist stereotypes on screen, while two others alleged they had experienced racism behind the scenes. In text messages reviewed by BuzzFeed News, employees also expressed concerns about booking guests with a history of mental illness and not feeling adequately prepared to work with them. Because naturally, if someone has the history of mental illness and you're literally a TV PA, you don't really know how to deal with that um I'm glad I work online because if someone yells at me I just shut my laptop and one of the former um employees even said that they were instructed to to make sure a guest did not take their prescribed medication we were specifically instructed make sure she doesn't take her medication before she goes on stage we want her to look unstable and quote unquote crazy for lack of a better term she did take the medication because no one got there in time and I remember thinking oh my god I don't want to be the one to tell them or dissuade them from that and that's all for TV's sake obviously the girl should be on medication and that's what we're trying to get her help for but for the sake of TV they wanted her to look off of the rails and Dr. Phil categorically denies racist conduct and CBS does not tolerate racism. Okay, CBS. Um, <clears throat> where's some other interesting things? Um, eight former employees described it as being a war zone. Five of the employees, one current and four former, say that the executive producer screamed and cursed at them, calling people idiots, stupid, retards, and threatening to fire people, which you're not supposed to say retards. That's really offensive. I probably shouldn't have just said it now. Sorry about that. We're reading. Um, it was traumatizing. It was the worst hour of your life. It was full-blown yelling, calling people idiots, slamming doors. It would not be acceptable in any other job or any other business. Um, so, yeah, really terrible current employee described it as being chaotic hostile and overbearing everyone's basically always on the verge of losing their job over something that could be a miscommunication or something that gets muddled up that just needs to be fixed i've worked jobs where people get angry but this is a whole nother level of strange neurotic behavior it's unceasing it's just constant there is no relief an employee said any minor slip up including listing recipients of an email in the wrong order leads to getting yelled at for hours and hours and hours on on a regular basis which they think is ironic considering that Dr. Phil is very preachy on air about treating people right. Um, and another employee said that the supervisor told them 
Um, to say the R word is ableist. Fish rots from the head, Dr. Phil. <laughs> so where was I? So a employee said that their supervisors said the less you share with a guest, the better. They're on a need to know basis. You all do a great job of convincing them your friends. So just make sure that you keep a firm line in the sand and not say too much. They will be the first ones to throw you under the bus. And that was in apparently an email. They we walk this really weird tightrope of booking people whose stories are just juicy enough for TV without being straight up illegal. But we also kind of blur the line on what we choose to share in the story, making it palpable for network television. It feels very ethically inappropriate. Um, and it had a very heavy toll. Like we said, I'll skip through some of this because it's a little bit redundant. People are saying it had a really bad effect on their health. They needed to quit because it was ruining their life. All of that. Um, guys, I got to use the emote. I only used it 24 hours ago. So yeah, lots of stories that BuzzFeed News investigated. So TLDR, basically, um, the lawsuit was brought, there was a lawsuit brought by a former employee who alleged that Dr. Phil locked her and other workers in the room and berated them over leaked information to the media, but that was eventually dismissed on a mutual agreement. So I guess they settled out of that. So they came to some kind of resolution. So there's all these allegations of lawsuits and that lawsuit made BuzzFeed investigate, which is what we just read. So even though the lawsuit of Dr. Phil locking these people in a room ended up getting thrown out because they came to an agreement, that's what prompted BuzzFeed to do this investigation that found a bunch of other fucked up shit as well. So where is he now? December 2023, he announced a new multi-platform um, media outlet known as Merritt Street Media. It's supposed to debut this month, but I couldn't really find anything on it. It'll focus on news and true crime and a new primetime series of Dr. Phil. Um, and it's not going to carry religious programming, but they are partnering with Trinity Broadcasting Network. So if you care to wrap up where Dr. Phil currently is, and he is currently worth $460 million. I'm feeling hungry. I don't know about you. When he brought John Benet Ramsey's brother on, that felt icky. Oh, Jesus Christ. So these were our sources for tonight. Before we play the game, let me give you another reminder that next week we will be on Tuesday again, and we will be talking about Kylie Jenner. Kylie Jenner, not in the sense of like, oh, Kylie Jenner, the influencer, but in the sense of like, why did your mom let you move in with your boyfriend and stop going to school when you were like 15 years old? Like, let's talk about that. That might have affected you in some ways, possibly. So next week, we'll be talking about Kylie Jenner. Love that this was my first stream and I completed the pipeline. Love that for you as well. Uh, for those of you on TikTok, I'm going to kick you out soon. So if you want to keep hanging out with us, um, come to Twits. And yes, we're here on Tuesday because tomorrow is Valentine's Day. And then next week, I have parent-teacher conferences. So we just did two Tuesdays in a row. I went ahead and put the link in the chat. This is a help the Tyga Kylie relationship was so normalized. Like where were the adults? So this is a trivia game. It's just for funsies. If you want to put in your name, you can, or you can put something fun or funny. Don't put in anything racist or offensive because that's boring and not funny. Um, and so to join this, you don't have to make an account. You don't have to sign up for anything like you're very much, you don't have to do any of that. You just go to join.nearpod.com and put in our code. The code is a DRG2J. Twitch link in chat. Yeah, the Twitch username is the same. It is the same everywhere. I know someone who went to Turnabout, and I don't want to air her business, but I do want to DM you if you're interested. Feel free to email me. My email is in my link tree. I... I get a lot of spam DMs because I'm a Walmart parking lot. So I get like a lot of weird like robots. Um, so yeah, just email me. That's uh, something I check more often. I'll give people a couple more seconds to join the game if you want to join. Or you can just watch my screen and you can see what's going on. You can join on your phone. You can join in a new tab. You can join lots of different ways. And again, you don't need an app. You don't need an account. You don't have to pay. I don't want your email address. It's literally just a fun trivia game. And it's join.nearpod.com. And then it will ask you for a code. When is the next teacher quit talk podcast? Wait, you get bots from a Walmart parking lot being your name. I feel like I get a lot of robots and like spam things in my DMs. I am not sure when the next episode of teacher quit talk comes out. I really just show up and record. So apologies. Could not tell you. Twitch not sending me a notification for this stream. Terrible. 
That is terrible. I'm going to go ahead and start this game and let's get this party going. It's the Valentine's Day theme. Wednesday, I think. Patreon already posted. Period. Love that. Love that y'all know more about my podcast than I do. Teacher Quit Talk is the best. It's a very fun time to film it. <clears throat> Who did we learn about today? I just checked Instagram and it's giving me Walmart <laughs> <clears throat> we can do more Vanderpump. I was going to do Tom Sandoval next week, but I don't know. I just wanted to take a little break from Vanderpump for a second. Let the new season play out more. But maybe after we do Kylie Jenner, we'll do Tom Sandoval because I really don't like him. We learned about Dr. Phil. This one has lots of pictures in it. Mr. Phil hater, the sad ranch horse. Also, for those of you on TikTok, bye bye. Love you so much. See you next week. He holds a doctorate in would love to complain about Tom. <laughs> I was at one of those wilderness camps. It was horrible. Yeah, I've generally seen not great reviews of them. It better not be child psychology. It was clinical psychology. Would love a full stream on Danielle. Maybe. I really don't know anything about her other than this now. Who launched Dr. Phil? Like I said, lots of pictures tonight. Troubled teen industry is just such a heavy topic. Like, I like to at least be able to laugh a little bit, you know? Wendy Williams, also serious topic. Maury? Maybe. Why did his first wife leave him? Oh, wait, I think I fucked up here. I think I put that he was controlling, but it's actually he cheated. That is so my bad. I actually did that at school recently, too. I just realized this. Oh, did I put him as both? Maybe I did. Let's see. Yeah, it's he was controlling and he cheated. So sorry about that. So sorry about that. That was my bad. Thanks, I didn't know the answer. I just know your students were furious. It happens a lot because I like just move really quick and I'm copying and pasting a lot and they get really mad. I always feel so bad. But to the other day, they were like, that's wrong. And then I looked back and it wasn't. What company did Dr. Phil found in 19, in 19, in 2012? Students used to try and gaslight me all the time. I think they were just wrong. No, they get over it in like two minutes. Which was not a name of one of his spinoffs? I always say whenever they call me out, I'm like, I go, I'm glad you've never made a mistake. Not to brag, but I'm at number one and participating in the chat. Wow. Wow incredible when you're more sorry about the infidelity quiz answer than he was about the infidelity <laughs> feelings with phil would be fun i would watch that who is taking philip down who is taking philip down i've heard this music so many times today oh my god because we played it twice in each of my classes. <laughs> Should be feelings with Phil. Did y'all see that JoJo was saying she's ready for kids? I did see that. That was really jarring. What is Philip's net worth? Ooh, Hobby Lobby stream. I might be into that. Did y'all see the Jesus ads during the Super Bowl? That is paid for by the guy that founded Hobby Lobby. Not exclusively by him, but it's paid by like this weird nonprofit that does nothing to help nobody. Um, and he is the biggest donor of that nonprofit. 
I did mess this up. It's definitely 460. I made a typo on the first one and then just leaned in with it. Sorry about that. A lot of y'all crushed it, though. A lot of y'all anticipated my typo. Damn, I had two flops in one game. Who are we learning about on Tuesday? Who are we learning about on Tuesday? <clears throat> I was hoping someone would recognize Poot. We might have to do a Hobby Lobby stream. We might have to. We are learning about Kylie Jenner on Tuesday. And this is what I do with my students when I want them to remember something. I put it in a question on Time to Climb to make them remember. When is class next week? When is class? See, four y'all got it wrong. I'm glad I put this in there. I have not done Goodwill. Class is on Tuesday. Class is on Tuesday. We're talking about Kylie Jenner on Tuesday. Nice job. Chaos, Muppet, Peach, Haley, Sammy, Sam. Catch me outside in the parking lot. Philip, Rye Girl, Senior Tackle, <laughs> Dr. Five, Fill Up. That's funny. Unstable Garbage, Mar Mariosis, Tatum, Mac Daddy, Suze, A Bald Parking Lot, Caught in a Parking Lot, Gay Boy, Soup, The Sad Ranch Horse. I will scroll through the rest. Dr. Phil Mustache, Phillip's Shiny Bald Head. Nice job. Nice job. We love to hear it. Shut the hell up, bitch. A parking lot in the middle of the woods. A Texas oiled field parking lot. Nice job. Nice job. Any memes, any thoughts, anything to share, anything I missed. We have been here for over two hours, so I'm not going to hang out too long. So be quick with it if you have a meme to put up. Um, last time I played this with my kids, the mountain disappeared and I'm still mad about it. I really don't like how the mountain only shows up on the kids side now. I really liked it when the mountain showed up on the teacher side and I really enjoyed seeing the mountain. Um, cancel the Dr. Phil series or I'm going to throw rocks through your window. You duff for, oh, that's terrifying. Best theme they've ever had. It's camp. That's a terrifying gif of this man. Here's a figure from the lipid paper. Eh? for plant science interesting thanks so much for sharing i was yelling where is the mountain and no one said anything <laughs> philip better watch out philip philip better watch out <clears throat> bad barbie are you here are you here with us i wish she was here um, but thank you so much for being here. I had so much fun with this topic. And again, next week we will be talking about Kylie Jenner and some of the things she has done and the things that have been done to her. Have a great night and I will